Welcome to Tig's Bits. Today we have a very special guest joining us. She is a social media sensation with over 2 million followers. She's a talented, a very talented Louisiana chef that has captured the hearts of food enthusiasts all across the world. She's competed on the Next Level Chef. She tells you to do whatever makes your little heart happy. I am, of course, talking about Miss Brittany Camille. Thank you so, so much for joining us. We are blown away to have you on here. Thank you. I'm really excited. I'm super excited to be here. Thank you all for having me. Let's just start right off the top. You know, I want to know where did this come from? Because I've followed, I've gone back to all of your TikToks. I've gone back, mm -hmm. I scrolled all the way down to, to the very first one. Uh, oh <laughs> I didn't watch them all. Don't worry. I'm just like, where did this start? So I just yep. looked at the date. No, don't worry. I didn't watch them all. So were you doing those? Were you doing? Were you doing uh, blog stuff and YouTube videos and all that stuff before the pandemic set in? Um. So actually, I've never. I don't really do YouTube. But oh, um, before Sorry. before no, you're fine. Um. Before I actually like before I did like the viral food recipes like before it got real big um i did post a couple of like random things uh like the i think my first ever mm -hmm, ever viral video was one of where i cleaned all of my husband's ball caps yes. in the bathtub oh, okay that was yeah and then um after that i think i just did a few things here and there and uh before that i was like a, um um, I did like pageants and stuff like that. So I held a national title and I would travel all around the state going to festivals and stuff. So I would post a couple of videos like talking about that and some of like the contests and events and all that. Um, and then whenever COVID got to like its peak, um, y'all know I work like a regular job and my boss was like, hey, y'all can't be here anymore. So um, I had to, we were off like one week at a time and uh, I had a lot of time on my hands. I didn't have my kid yet. So I was just, I was like, you know what? I think I'll post some of my recipes, and then you know, here we are. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> well, I would say it's right. Out. Well, it's kind of like a lot of people. You know, we all started podcasting during the pandemic mm -hmm. as well, because yeah. like you said, everybody's used to have their routine, and you make time for other things, and it's fun. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, well, what am I going to do now? It's like, well, lean into my hobbies. What do I right. like to do? We like to talk. You like to cook. Might as well let everybody <laughs> exactly. else see it. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, that's pretty much and, what uh, it was. And you have the people's uh, attention because everybody else is at home too. And they're like, all right, I've eaten the same meatloaf I've made for 20 years. And let's see, oh, there's this Brittany here. What's she making? Ooh, pasta lie sounds good, you know? <laughs> yes. So uh, so that totally makes sense. Well, that's awesome. And um, and what? so what was the first uh, viral video? Was it, the, oh, it was the hat. Yeah, the hat, the yeah hat. I've got a yeah. question yeah. about that. I hadn't, hadn't seen I, that because I, I have questions guy. about the hat. So the I, hat? that's what that's, that's a big what I problem. Know. Yes. That's a big issue with guys. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a okay. huge issue. It's a huge issue. So to walk us through that because my wife watched the video last night mm -hmm. i went oh my I mean, god all this of these may need solve cleaning problems. right now yes you know? all of them okay so my husband is a cattle rancher and uh so he has i don't know y'all i think all of the shelves in our closet which is like a giant two-person walk-in closet i don't have room for anything on those shelves they're all hats. <laughs> um we have so many of them anyway besides point so uh he's a cattle rancher and they get they're disgusting so yeah, nasty. I understand. So, yeah, sweaty, uh, nasty, dirty, right. mud, so, yeah. dirt, um, dust, yeah, smoke, I found, everything else. I think else. I saw it. Yeah, I think I saw it on Facebook. Maybe it was this post about cleaning ball caps, and it was essentially like you put you run some really really hot water in your bathtub, and in that you put like um, I think maybe like borax, maybe some like laundry detergent, and uh, like Arm and Hammer. Um, like clothes clean or something like that. I don't remember. And you put the hats in there and you cover them with hot water and you let them soak for a little while. And then it like strips all of that dirt and stuff away. Um, and then you take them out and let them dry. And I mean, they got pretty clean. I think really? the only you issue put them in we the had. Dishwasher. You yeah. put them in the dishwasher too. So did you put to no detergent? Them. It's just like, basically mm -hmm. that's just like another I think rinse. I just ran the dry cycle. Oh, rinse okay. Rinse and dry, okay. yeah. In the dishwasher. Because, yeah, yeah, the trick when we were growing up was to put them in the dishwasher on mm -hmm. the top rack and this and the inside out or something, yep. or fold them up and put them on. Yeah, I had a little really... rack thing that it would go into, a little mm -hmm. white rack thing. And right, it yeah. In and put it in the dishwasher. But... It never worked that great, though. It did okay, <laughs> it depending okay. on 
And like you're saying, your husband or a ball player or something that's in dirt mm-hmm. and mud and sweat mixed together right. and then engines running and everything mm-hmm. else. And, you know, and it works for his clothes from. too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this we, is we great put his clothes in the hot water and it strips all that, yeah, all that all nasty out of there. In there. And, yeah, mm-hmm. it pulls it out. How many yeah. views that, did that one get? It was like 3.4 million, I think. And that yeah. got me my, yeah, I think it, will, yeah. it just, and, and I, I mean, I didn't expect, yeah. And it just, um, it, uh, it, it got me my first like 15,000 followers. And then I stayed at 15,000 for a very, very that long first time. First 15,000 was tough for me too. I, it was, I stayed there it. for <laughs> a very long time. We'll get yeah. there one day. That's crazy though. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, how how crazy did your phone go? Because we had one video on this show that went to like I don't know. We had like seven hundred thousand, and mm-hmm. that was nuts. Just a yeah. nutty a nutty run. Three million. You've done that multiple times. <laughs> like, what's so, it like when you with your phone? I'm that person. Like, my phone is on do not disturb all the time. <laughs> yes, my all the time. Too. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. notifications to on like TikTok and some of my other apps are just off. Like they don't come up yep. at all. Um, so I'll go on every now and like, that's how I didn't realize that the first like a viral food recipe that I had was uh, my mama's spaghetti. And I posted that and I think I went to bed or something like that. And then I woke up the next day and I was at work and I was sitting at my desk and I got bored. So I was like, oh, I'm going to get on TikTok right quick. And I got on it and I remember the app opened up and like at the bottom when all the notifications pop up, it was like 99 plus, 99 plus, 99 plus. And I was like, what, what did I do? Is happening? <laughs> what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> exactly I've been scammed. Like, <laughs> I didn't know what had happened. I was like, oh, this is terrifying. <laughs> yeah. I, it kind of is, isn't it? I mean, it, it, you've reached a whole nother, a whole nother level of, of stardom, I guess, if yeah, you will. Just, There's I not mean, a ton of creators like, that are over, feel. over a million. When did you? When did you make that next jump from like having 15,000 for a long time? What was the next like? I, I want to say after I did the spaghetti, I did a couple of like get to know me videos because I kind of grew after the spaghetti, but not a ton. I don't exactly remember Then I did a couple of like get to know me's and then um, I did fried pickles and buttermilk ranch and spinach and artichoke dip. And those yep. three took it. I mean, we were straight through the roof. So you were flying and, then. I those mean, fried it pickles just, look good. Yeah, they did. <laughs> And it was insane. Was awesome. Those those three are those are those three like have been my most viral, I believe. Well, maybe not. I think the potatoes were anyway. Some of my most viral to date, um, and those took my biggest jump from whatever I don't remember what I was at to. I think those are what took me to a million. Wow! Wow! And of and course, and it it, it makes crazy. sense too. I mean, our, everyone's in America's favorite place to eat. The most of us, especially us Southerners, is New Orleans. We all love New Orleans food. And every my wife's from Louisiana. My wife's from Homa, Louisiana. So mm-hmm. I'm used. To, I, I love the food. And I grew up in Alabama and Mississippi eating great yeah. food. But Louisiana food is special. It's just it's it's a whole thing itself. And <laughs> someone from the culture explaining it with your accent and your personality on these new platforms it makes so much sense and i'm glad it happened to you because um, obviously it's it's taken off the way it did because you're the right person to do it and uh, thank you and and all of that makes sense because it's like i said it's the best culinary city we got the best state we've got for that pound for pound i just i just came from out well i just came from out west i just went to four states up in the pacific northwest no offense Mm -hmm. to these people at all but they just don't know about (laughs) season they don't uh, everything's al dente nothing's nothing's cooked long enough nothing has any flavor on it and, I, Look, and they but they think it's fine because they don't know any better i'm like come down south come to mama's we'll get you some chicken oh, yeah. and dumplings we'll get yeah. you some jambalaya you know uh we'll get you down south and get show you and then take that back home because y'all need some seasoning in your life <laughs> <laughs> Look, right. i will say i was i was just in new york city in january of this year i think and um the food wasn't as bad as you would think it would be i now, was new york I, no the, it the wasn't cities, as yeah. seasoned you know, as I was, right, as, as, right. as I was used to, but like the flavors were really, really good. I was, I was fairly surprised. Yeah. That's New York, uh, New York Maybe and LA historically mm-hmm. have been uh, in, in Vegas now. Yeah. Oh, we lost it. Oh, JR. JR. JR went oh. mute on us. He'll be back. Yeah. This I'm back. Sorry guys. You're back, but oh, you're on that. your, uh, the, your, your mic lock came, uh, went out again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back, guys. Hold y'all right. continue on. I'll Sounds be back. Good. Sorry, guys. We'll keep rolling. It's all no good. worries. No worries. Yeah, so uh 
So New York, yeah, you know, that, that that's what's cool about it there. They actually, you know, my favorite thing to do there, and people are like, what? Is I'll go from a hot dog vendor to hot dog vendor. Now, those are oh. the things that I love. The, there. Don't get me wrong. You got all these other great, fabulous yeah. restaurants, I understand. But those hot dog vendors on the street, good Lord. I'll eat, I mean, literally, <laughs> in a day, I'll eat eight of those things. I, I had bam, one. Bam, my bam. friend Alex from Alex uh, from Next Level Chef from the season three, She, uh, I met her up there. And uh, she's actually, I believe, from Jersey. And so she took me to my first, like, street hot dog vendor. I'd never, I've never even seen that before. And so I was like, I got my first hot dog off the street. <laughs> yeah, the only oh, thing man. I know about that is just Lucky Dogs in New Orleans, and I generally have avoided those. <laughs> I'm not saying people love them, and I'm sure that like they have mm-hmm. the the restaurant one now. I've eaten it. I mean the the airport one and stuff like that. I've eaten it that one. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure I've eaten it one too at late at night if I was walking out of Bourbon Street. Oh, Maybe I don't recall. In the right, but, in the right you know, setting. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. right setting they can they can hit, but that would be an amazing little tour to go on a little hot dog vendor oh, tour, yeah. pizza oh, yeah. tour as something oh, yeah. I you want that to big do. Italian influence up there, and you know <laughs> the pizzerias and all the mm-hmm. other good action. So, yeah, oh. absolutely. Oh yeah, for sure, Brittany. What? Uh, how did this start? Like, I mean, we, we've got how you started with social media, how that mm-hmm. has boomed. We'll get to next level chef. But how did let's go back a little bit. Where did you get this love and passion for cooking? Because my parents. you, I haven't ever tried anything that you've eaten. But my lord, if it could speak <laughs> through the screen, I know it's good. There's no doubt in my mind. And you make some of the just most amazing things. Thank you. How did Thank how where'd you learn where'd you learn all this? My parents um, for the basics, pretty much. Um, whenever I was little, my daddy would put me on like a milk crate in the kitchen and I'd stand up next to him at the stove and help him cook. Um, and then while I was growing up, you know, my mama did most of the cooking. Um, and then, uh, fun fact, my parents took in foster kids whenever I was little, we were like, um, a foster home. Um, and over the course of so many years, I think I had like 13 brothers and sisters over, you know, so anyway, we, um, during the summers, we spent a lot of time at home and my mama had to go back to work eventually, I think after she had my youngest brothers. Um, and so I was like, well, I'm going to take it upon myself to kind of take care of everybody because for the most part, everybody was younger than me. Um, and so I I was like, well, I'm going to start trying to cook some of the stuff that mama makes. And uh, those would basically be like, you know, rice and gravies and easy peasy things. And um, as I grew up, um, I wanted to learn how to make more Cajun dishes and that influence comes from my daddy. Um, so if I needed help, I'd be like, Hey, I'd call him. It was really whenever I was in college, I would be like, Hey daddy, I need to know how to make a, I need to know how to make a chili for 16 people, or I need to know how to make um, an etouffee or a gumbo or so on and so forth. And so I would call him and he would walk me through it. Um, and then as I did it more and more and more, I just kind of, you know, I got the hang of it and I learned how to really like take either the traditional way to do something or the way that he does it and kind of like play off of it and do it my way. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. That is so awesome. That's one thing I love to ask everyone that we've had on mm-hmm. that, that that's somehow associated with cooking. Like where did this love and right. this passion begin? Because if you don't so have that, yeah. I mean, if you don't have that in you, then you, it doesn't come across. It just, right. yeah. it doesn't come, oh, across, it doesn't come across. You knew it was some deep roots there. Yeah. Uh, I love it. And it's, it's like, it's really, um, it just, it makes me really happy. Cause like if I post something, especially that's like of Cajun influence or something of the sort or something that I grew up on, uh, like my mom will text me and she's like, Oh my God, that looks good. Like you did a really good job. Um, or if I do something of Cajun influence, my daddy will text me or he'll call me or he'll comment on it. And he's always funny about it. He'll leave a comment. Like that's not like mine's better. Dot, 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 dot. Or, you <laughs> yes. know, something funny, um, but I did that, something, that I did awesome. a red beans and rice for, I was teaching a class in Lafayette a few weeks ago and I did red beans and rice and I dropped it. I was going to Lafayette. So I stopped at his house so he could like, you know, check it for me. And he took a bite and he was like, girl, he said, these might be better than mine. I was done. I was on cloud nine on all day long. Yeah, right. I was done. I was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the, yeah I'm I'm I mean, that's you the goal. That's what you're shooting for. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I love it. My daughter. And it's just, I guess, you know, your dad's probably my age our age maybe a little bit older but it's it's fun because my daughter is on social media and she comments on stuff Mm -hmm. about our show and things like that but those are always the highlights like 
Oh, she, I forget. She watches too, you know? Right. Like, oh, oh <laughs> of course don't she get does. me started on forgetting that like my real life friends watch these. <laughs> Right, 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 right. Like, right. I was, so, y'all know, I put sometimes outside of like my food, I'll post videos about like my day at work or whatever. So, the other day, I was, I went to go do something. I think maybe I was like, I might have been in the judge's office doing bonds or something like that. And one of the bailiffs is a really, really good friend of mine. Actually, they all are, but one of them's a really good friend of mine. And so, he was picking on me and he was like, You need a, um, you need, where's your phone at? You need a video of this. Like, come to do my life with me as a minute clerk at the courthouse. And I was like, Stop. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. So, what is your, what, do, what is your day job? Brittany, so what do um, you do daily? My like besides title, make everyone hungry with your videos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think my title is like deputy clerk, but like um, to get into detail, I'm a minute clerk, which is essentially a records keeper. And the way that our district is divided up, we're divided into civil and criminal. And I work in criminal, and then criminal is further divided up into juvenile, misdemeanor, and felony. And I strictly work in felony, um, so I handle. A f- a good amount of felony cases allotted to a specific judge of ours. Um, and I keep the files, you know, in check. I put everything in there. I send notice to defendants and attorneys. And like, whenever I'm in court, like, like I'm the person that like raise your right hand and like swear somebody in. And uh, like when evidence is filed in a trial, like that comes to me and I log that and handle the appeals process with like the um, circuit court and the Supreme court and all that mess. So to say you got organization skills would be kind of an understatement. <laughs> they, they were a long time coming. It it took a long time to try to figure out how to, like, make everything run smooth. It, it took a little while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, how yeah, do that, you uh, – I mean, that the organizational skills, that, that leads right into a question that I've had. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you put out content daily, it, it mm-hmm. seems. Um, Almost. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> how do you yeah. do that? How are you a mama? And do that, make these videos, because some of them, I know that you have some in the can and you're working on editing them and all that. Everybody's with, but some of these that I see you do, those are like the morning of, or mm-hmm. maybe they at least appear that way, but they, I don't. No, that's, I, that's what they I, are. I, yeah. Like you get up at three in the morning, you couldn't that's sleep. That's legitimate. And you're like, yeah. I think I'll make some biscuits in this amazing yeah. meal. It's like, like using mm-hmm. all those other crazy Like that's, stuff. that's yeah. not pretend. I, I, um, so I, I I like to get up early. I like to start my mornings really early. Um, it helps me feel like, I don't know, kind of more put together for my day. I don't always film in the mornings, um, but my general wake up time is between like four and 5.30. Um, if I'm going to film something, it's about three. Um, that way I can set up and get ready and film and, you know, have time to put all my stuff up and clean my kitchen before I have to go to work. Um, and then I go to work. I work like a normal excuse me, like a normal eight hours and then uh, pick up my kid. And on occasion, we'll like in the evenings, a um, couple of days a week, we'll go to the park. Uh, one day we, we have his gym class. And then uh, most of my filming is done on the weekends. Like I'll pick a Saturday or a Sunday and I will just, I will either start, um, if I have all my groceries, I'll start that morning at like three or four, five, something like that. If I don't, I'll go to the grocery store when they open at seven get everything and go home and I'll start and I'll film until, you know, five or six in the evening and knock out anywhere from like, I've done 11 videos in one day um, and just wow. had like a backlog to post if I knew that I was going to be busy. Yeah. 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 You have to do that. That's yeah. that's because I think you can say one thing I've noticed, we have a long ways to go. Follow us at Tig's Bits podcast on all uh-huh. your social media platforms. We have a long ways to go, but we'll get there, but I'll you get have there. to be consistent. Mm-hmm. You have to post, dang near daily and Almost, just yeah. stay stay in front of people just something mm-hmm. you know and you're I mean, you get what close to two, two million followers total? i think if you like if you add, add everything up yeah if you add them up from all that's of them that's crazy yeah. yeah i don't think we ever got that final number but it's <laughs> nuts like 1.7 on tiktok yeah. and like that's, yeah that's tons that's everywhere like else that. it's, it, it's oh, nuts so insane. how do you um how, some of that rub here do you edit do you do yes. all of your editing <laughs> i do everything do you, myself and it's I'm all on my cell phone what wow. i was gonna geek out i was like i gotta geek out for a you do all of that on your phone oh my mm-hmm. Lord. everything's on my cell phone yep wow <laughs> how, how did amazing. you how did you come about knowing all the uh, how to do all that kind of stuff was that something you already had a little bit of knowledge oh, on did you watch a youtube no. video like the rest of us 
no that was no. oh my gosh there was a there was a learning curve for that so whenever i first started um the first few videos that i ever did i fa actually filmed in the tiktok app and that was back when you couldn't film more than a minute and you right. couldn't like combine your drafts or anything like that so i was like starting saying something stopping starting saying and i was having a mm. like and it was very difficult wow and then eventually i started filming on my camera like my camera on my phone um, and I would go into my photos app and I would clip the videos like that. And um, I would edit them. So I would film on my camera, but I'd like start it, say something, stop it. And, you know, so on and so forth. And so I'd have a, a hundred clips and then um, I would upload those to TikTok and I would edit them that way. Okay. And then eventually um, I still did the, the filming in my camera roll or in my regular camera but I would leave the, it runs the entire time. So, I mean, I, I turn it on and I don't stop it until uh, I'm yeah, done. Right, and right. There's like a big break. And then I, I found like a video editing app um, and I just upload them to that, edit it that way, and then like download it from that and upload it to TikTok. Wow. There's yeah. a very Look, good I'm what the video editing app is because that's all, it's, it's the issue here with us. I yeah. use, like the brain. I do everything on my phone. I yeah. use Splice. 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 <laughs> Splice. What's it called? Splice. Okay. Splice. Okay. Cool. That's the one that I like yeah. that one. I Shout really out like Splice. It. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank we always have the sponsors yeah, here. You're welcome, <laughs> Splice. <laughs> you got you a plug from a, a, a right. very good Splice plug right there. Thing. Yeah. I mean, that's. But that's... I'm sure that, and I'm sure there's a ton of people in your same spot that you just don't know, but you know you can, you you want to try and you do what you yeah. can mm -hmm. with what you have. And then right. as you as you grow and learn and you can do mm -hmm. new tricks and new techniques and things, that's awesome. And now. Yeah. Because people even, you know, the, I've been doing podcasting for four years now. People think, oh, podcast master. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm still figuring out every day if any little thing goes wrong, I don't know how to fix it. This is right. all just barely put together. But <laughs> you learn stuff as you go. And uh, and that, that that's neat. I'm sure a lot of people would be interested in hearing that, too, because um, I'm sure someone's doing it the way you did four, oh, yeah. four times yeah. ago still. It, yeah. Yeah, Somebody it, it is listening. Yeah, somebody's listening or watching to this, watching this right now. And they're, they, they love doing it. They have some kind of a passion or a drive. It mm -hmm. may not be cooking necessarily. It may be yeah. something else. Just videos in general. Yeah. Just, Sometimes the. Just do it. Yeah. I, I learned Isn't that, that what you, you know, would say? Just do it. Don't be scared. <laughs> just do just, it and post yeah. it. Like take the, taking the, the stress out of the editing process, like, or some of it, because it still gets on my nerves, but the, uh, taking yeah. a lot of the stress out of the editing process made like wanting to film more made me want to do more because now it's just yeah. it's just it's easier you know it's not yeah, as and you have and it gives you more time yeah. you're not spending five right. hours editing when you're spending <laughs> half an hour you get well, more yeah, time like, to make more videos take for instance last night um i got off of work and i went home i you know changed out of my uniform got dressed um set everything up i filmed a recipe and then i uploaded all my drafts and i was able to edit it and post it last night after work wow and so wow. I got home. Wow. I think I, I think I got home around four thirty ish, four four thirty. And so I was able to film, edit, and upload all before like eight thirty. Nice. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah, I'd say you're a machine. And machine. then in the middle of that, I, in the middle yeah, of that, crazy. I cleaned my house and cook supper and bathe my kid and put him to bed. <laughs> Wow. Boys, I have ways America, to go. Can I, be I thought wherever. I was doing stuff, but I don't yeah, think I am. I think that's what I was going to say. Everybody should be inspired now. Get up and do something. I'm tired. <laughs> you tired? How do you How do you keep coming up with ideas? Like, how do you keep coming up with recipes? That I have. Um, so I started. I call it my master list. I have a list in my notes app that I have added to since I started in like 2020, and uh, I will. Oh, wow. I just Holy add to it. It so just, just keeps going. a continuous list. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and every time somebody comments an idea, um, I'll put it in there. Or if oh, I see somebody else post something and I'm like, ooh, I could piggyback off of that and do like this. I'll like type, you know, details or something in there and I'll add it mm -hmm. there. And um, and I just, I keep that list going and I try to update it every time. Like I do a new one or something like that. And a lot of times, like my suggestions will be from somebody like, oh, hey, um, I ate at this restaurant one time and I had um, this dish that had like uh, crab and shrimp and, and pasta. And it was like a sauce. Do you know what that is? If not, can you like remake it? 
I can figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> we can <Yeah>. try. <laughs> and so that's just, that's where a lot of them come bit. from. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I would say once you built a fan base, which it mm -hmm. sounds like didn't ha didn't take long, then you start <laughs> getting comments. You can read comments. It's mm -hmm. content breeds content. Yes. You know, so then you start getting ideas. With mm -hmm. that said, I know there has to be a negative side to all of that that we haven't talked about. I don't, we don't mm -hmm. have to harp on this, Brittany, but just <laughs> briefly, I know that anytime you get to there, maybe we do. Maybe we, we need to know how to handle this when it starts coming because people are people and they, they mm -hmm. become invincible <laughs> behind a keyboard. Mm -hmm. And uh, how 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 has that worked for you? Have you had to deal with any of that kind of stuff? Yeah, I learned a um I learned a very important lesson. Um so whenever I first started, obviously, you know, um I felt like people like my content for me, but um part of the reason that I like blew up so to say was the amount of hate that I got in my comment section. Um and it would just drive people it it would be like when you open my comment section, that's that's like all of it. it that was it. That's all you saw. Yeah. Um and whenever I first started, I just I left it there. Um, sometimes I would argue back, sometimes I would say stuff back and I would just leave it there. And then I would get in it to go like respond to something and it would just be negative. I mean, all the way down or for the most part. Um, and then that, that, that really took a toll on me. Like it, things got really difficult. Um, and I took several breaks from being online and, um, nothing really seemed to help. Um, and then finally I decided to, I just block people now. I mean, I don't care. Okay. If we're mutuals, I don't care if you follow me. Um, if you say something hateful, negative. negative, if you bully somebody else in my comment section, Bye. Um, and it's and it's real extreme, block. I I, I don't care. Um, and you know, people say that like, oh, you you should leave you. all that there. They pay your bills. I don't get paid for this, so there's yeah, no reason right. they should be in my no. comment section. I, I don't probably, monetize. And, and I was gonna say, and half of them are probably bots from Russia or something, anyway. So it's not even real people. It's just it's just driving hate. Yeah. Oh, you went mute. Uh, there you go. I don't <laughs> so like that, that whole like, oh, let them stay in there and argue. You're getting views. You're getting money. Da, da, da. No, I'm not. Y'all are in there right. raising hell for no reason. It makes me sad. And who are you to make that was it? Own house. <laughs> Yeah. Right. That was a question I had. Are you able to monetize anything I on am. TikTok um, Summit at mm -hmm. now, at least, hopefully? I am. I just, That's I choose awful. not to. Um, I, okay. we're, we pay, you know, my husband and I manage to pay our bills with, we both work full time. Um, and he, we have a cattle ranch that he runs with his daddy. And so we're, we're taken care of. Um, and I just didn't feel the need to turn this into another job. You know, because yeah, I feel like if yeah. I'm getting paid for it, it's it's work, and I I like doing it. So for me, it's just it's just a hobby. It's just something to do. That's that amazing. Makes that's amazing. That's yeah. true passion. That really is true true passion. passion. And, and wow. that's, that, because that's how it is. I work in the music business, but I mm -hmm. see a lot of people the same way. After a while, you know, you got into it for the passion, but once it's mm -hmm. a job, it's just a job, and then you look yeah. at it a little different. Um, yeah. Well, and, yeah. and well, see, on I'm, down the line, would there be something like a cookbook though? Are we gonna have the Brittany Camille cookbook? I have two, <laughs> actually. Uh -oh. Yeah, you do. We actually have. Now we're two. talking. Oh, I love oh it. yes. All right. I'm going I'm online two. right now and ordering them right now. So you're about <laughs> so, to make you're about uh, to monetize this right yes. now. <laughs> yep, you're about well, okay. yeah. Because I, I looked, I found them last night, and I'm like, oh my god, yeah, I gotta have them. People I didn't have it. I didn't even know. <laughs> People love to correct me when I say I don't like. No, you're no, you're fine. You're fine. Whenever um. You're you're fine. It ain't a big deal. Whenever I say I don't monetize my socials, they're like, "Well, you um you have cookbooks that's making money," and I'm like, "Okay, but like I don't I don't get paid per view." That's what I mean when I say I don't monetize. Correct. Um, Correct. but like I work, I spend a lot of money and time on these. Um, this is my first one, and it's pretty much just a collection of like, let's see if I can flip through that of like all of my most viral recipes. Um, okay. and it's basically it's mainly food in this one. Um, this one is just like entrees, appetizers, like dips and sauces. And I think there's even like a soup chapter. Um, and then this nice. one, this one, um, is, it's basically a holiday book. If I had to like categorize it, it's based off of the holidays. However, um, it is, they're both 50 recipes. And I think this one actually might be 51. Um, but it is broken up into 
let's see. It's broken up into like chapters named after the holidays, but each chapter okay. has Perfect. an appetizer, an entree, two sides, a uh, dessert, an alcoholic drink, and a non-alcoholic drink. So it's more, oh, I feel like perfect. more well-rounded. Yeah, I love yeah. What's the name of that book? This one, this one is just a little what? bitter, and this one's just a little bit more. Love I it. love it. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah. That should be that should be on everyone's countertop in America. Yep. That's that's perfect for everyone. You want to bring you want to so bring some good these. food home. Oh, you should how be. That's awesome. They, I can't wait to get them. How can how can everybody purchase one of these? How can they oh, purchase these, Brittany? So, um, I made a very um, juvenile mistake, and whenever I picked my publisher, um, I picked kind of the first one that reached out to me, and. Uh, I learned my lesson. I, they're they're sweet folks, um, but it is unfortunately only available in the link that is in my bio, and okay. it's from uh, like www.found.us. It's found.us. Um, they're only available there, and they ship directly from the publishers, which I think is based in the UK. Um, so my goal eventually is to get like a US based publisher and create sort of. Um, one book that kind of encompasses yeah. the two plus some yeah. more like i want my third oh, one to be upwards of like 170 to, to 200 recipes and encompass like stories and and better photographs and details and, and things like that stuff that i couldn't put in these so that's that's right. eventually my plan like a great like awesome. a greatest hits uh book that would pretty be, yeah. yeah pretty much yeah. sort of yeah, yeah like i want to kind of take Britain's the two <laughs> kind of take the two and then you know i want to sit down and talk to uh, like my daddy and get some of the stuff that like he had whenever he was growing up and same thing with my mama and just kind of like talk to my family and kind of like play off of that because like I said yeah. before they're they're really important to me and um that was kind of like the basis for this one this one is is based off of like my family's favorites and then and then some some of like just brainstorm ideas that I had um but it's mainly focused around my family uh and that's kind of how i want all of them to be that's how i want a lot of my stuff to be is kind of like a tribute yeah. to them that's oh, yeah amazing. that's great and you know everyone would love that hell let your mom and dad both have a uh have have one of their recipes in there and them explaining it that would be cool yeah, yeah. That, especially actually, actually, especially your dad it sounds yeah. like, <laughs> He's, like you know that makes better. so happy that's my that's my plan. He doesn't know it yet. Um, so, Daddy, if you see this, just go with it. Um, my plan is to have them handwrite them, not all yes. of them, a couple of them. And my daddy yes. doesn't write yeah, yeah. anything down uh, at all. Like I texted him months ago and I was like, Daddy, I need to I need to know how to make a cuvion. And he called me. He said, "You think I'm going to text all that? You stupid." So he told me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Well, it would be nice to have it in writing because I was like in the car." I was like, hold on, let me pull over so I can write it down. <laughs> and I wrote it on That's the back funny. of like I think a like I think I wrote it on the back of a piece of mail. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You, Red, we'd say you should put that. You should put Dad's redfish cuvion uh, <laughs> on recipe all, on the back of the thing. That's it. Printed on <laughs> like, the page. Yeah, from the, That's it. Yeah. That is yeah, it. There you go. <laughs> well, at least he could explain it. And, yeah, and explain and it. Just that, puts that, that would be awesome. Well, my grandmother, who's from Mississippi, and she was my yeah. favorite cook of all time, similar though, but my grandmother never wrote down like how much of things. Like She could explain it, but she's like this much or that, that much. And she, because yeah. I, yeah. I would call her when I was in college, like, Grandmother, what about making mm -hmm. this or that? And she said, well, you put this, like she couldn't tell me two cups, one cup. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. a little this, little that. So. And, and that's the hardest uh, yeah. part for me when it comes to writing a recipe. And if you watch my videos, you'll see that like whenever I pour something, I'm literally, I'm just pouring it in the bowl. I'm not actually right. measuring. And so what y'all don't see is the time that I cooked it before that two or three times. And I literally, or even sometimes if it's, if it's my first time making something, I have my scale. I have like a kitchen scale off to the side okay. and I'll measure something out and then I'll like dump it in there and so like um in between my clips of me like you know cooking i'd be like okay that was three cups <laughs> right and so exactly. I have, like, like verbal okay. to myself and I'll, yes I'll be, like, perfect like show I... myself the scale because <laughs> yeah. you don't a little inside you've baseball, it baseball for us right, right no. there everybody yeah. that's yeah. i was i was gonna ask because we've had how how the cajun lady yeah. accent has been on and she doesn't oh, measure yeah. anything and then she's making a cookbook too and i'm interested to don't see worry. how her cookbook's gonna be <laughs> i don't know how you can explain it without but if anybody can do it she's the one who can do it yeah oh sure. yeah hal is fantastic she is she is mm -hmm. i saw that y'all got to meet in some video yes. at, at some actually, point while i was 
oh no, I think I was supposed to be with her. I think I was supposed to see her sometime. I think in July, but I think maybe that got, oh, anyway, I don't know. I don't know if she's going to be at something that I'm going to be at this weekend or not. I can't remember. Yes, yeah, you're at, you're at a lot of stuff. So we've also had a guy, a uh, Cajun critic. I don't know how we, mm-hmm. I think because Hal came on, it's just plugged us into this fun mm-hmm. Louisiana network and I'm right. cool with that. Uh, but he he's awesome too. Y'all are all at a lot of the same events. Mm-hmm. Cooking with Cajun, uh, oh, which we Cajun he follows anyway. us. We haven't talked to him yet. He seems like an amazing dude. Oh my god, they're so nice. We're and coming so for funny. you, buddy. <laughs> we <hadn't> got there <laughs> I'm, yet. I'm gonna be with all of them this weekend, and I'm so excited. They are such fun people. So much fun yeah. to be around. Yeah, that's so awesome. That's so so awesome. They're yeah, great I've uh, I enjoy following everybody mm-hmm. and just seeing all the stuff it just you know everybody food louisiana is just a it's almost like a religion in, in oh, a way but absolutely. you know i mean much. it really is i mean yeah i grew up like my so my grandmother was really you know southern mm-hmm. cook you know unbelievable you know alabama southern cooking delicious my grandfather now he's mm-hmm. italian and so he gave all this great italian dishes and he mixed it a lot with coastal dishes mm-hmm. and then now i take what i've learned from mm-hmm. both of them and then mix it with all that louisiana that sounds- influence and man that sounds it, great oh my hey, god you know britney Bla- like, yeah, like cook. perfect he can cook oh, yeah so, i promise that you. sounds he totally fantastic can but i can't wait to try some of these recipes that you're <laughs> yep. i've seen a few of them that dang garlic bread <laughs> oh, that, that's so a late look, that that Lord. recipe no. you just posted that here recently and that yeah. was a look like a labor of love to make it that is. but my lord you know I, people that that's probably one of the i don't want to say complaints but one of the biggest like like issues people have is sometimes some of my recipes take take hours and they're like oh well you could do it this way and it's a lot faster and I'm like I'm sure it's faster but that doesn't mean it's better and I'm not saying right. that my way is better but there's nothing it's wrong your with way. taking your time yeah there's nothing it's there's nothing way. wrong with taking your time I watched you making a, a batch a large batch of roux which mm-hmm. I occasionally will do that too yeah and I you were doing that. you were standing over that thing for like four to six hours mm-hmm. it's like Woo, okay, I like my hour and a half one, uh, which I thought was <laughs> yes. insane, but <laughs> you know, it's like I'll do. I like yeah, having it on I hand. Cooking roux all together. Yeah. I, I, I shortcut. You it, know what? But you do it the well, right look, way. Well, look, I'm sure, not. But. I will admit it, and I don't care if y'all revoke my. I buy it in the store sometimes. I, some, oh, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Like to to me, there's I, this like, there's this extreme hate for people in Louisiana who cook by other people in Louisiana who cook. <laughs> right that's true right. hey that's that true. is true it is that is true we 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 hurt our own more than anybody it's like the rest of america thinks any of this is um, unbelievable uh-huh. exactly but then we're gonna be like uh 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 you didn't make your own roux yes, yes. it is an, it's, it's like, incredible <laughs> like i'm part of this facebook group i don't know if y'all are that the what you got in the, in that pot or whatever that page is one entertaining because like sometimes I'll get ideas for things and two because like if somebody posts something and they don't agree with it I could spend hours in the comment sections like they're oh, just oh, yeah yeah um, yeah just with <laughs> yeah and that's one thing that I it took me a little while I, I was that person at first um I was like oh I can't believe like you're doing it that way or but I never I never did it publicly I never like went on and like hated somebody but like in my own private little world I was like you know and then mm-hmm. um I eventually I grew up to put it blunt, like I grew up and I was like, if that's what works for them, then who am I to tell them that they're wrong, you know? And right. that's how I feel about when people judge me for the way that I do something. I'm like, look, it, it works for me. We like it this way. Um, like take for instance, whenever I like saute my veggies, if I'm going to go to make a rice and gravy or a gumbo or a stew or something, my personal minimum is 25 minutes to saute. And most okay. of the time I go upwards to an hour. So I you prefer just are that. more you more go a little lower and slower. Mm-hmm. And I do that. that way you don't burn things. you don't burn anything though, do you, Brittany? Well, no, yeah. don't I uh, don't say that. Well, I mean, I mean don't say you, that. <laughs> less <laughs> you you don't burn as much. Right. We no, say. but that's just that's just my personal preference. And I don't have I don't have a real good reason for it other than, you know, that's just what we like. Um yeah, but right. that there's just this like thing where people don't like to like take into consideration that that's just somebody else's preference, you know? Yeah. Right. Different part of the state, even in exactly. Louisiana, like oh different my gosh. parts of the country. Uh-huh. Everybody, the only one, the only one I think we all can agree on, and I, and you may not, is uh, 
putting du- dusting the crawfish after they're already done. Don't put the seasoning on top of the crawfish after they're already done. That's the only one that that I, I'm. <laughs> oh, I here, we oh, somebody, here we go. Here we go. We may need to save it. Oh. Let's save that, Brittany. Yeah. Save save that. I have a feeling oh. that that we may be coming back to that question here in just oh, a few minutes. <laughs> it just makes <laughs> your hands it. dirty. Oh. <laughs> I, I, get it. I get it. I get it. All right, Brittany, I've got to ask you. Are, is That's your a husband, North I-10 thing versus South I-10 Is your husband thing. from North Louisiana or he South is. Louisiana? He All right, is. We met in college. Yeah, she did. No, no, look, that did, explains. We did not it's okay. I met him. And I, did you? Like, yeah, that's just, that's not something, that's another thing. I don't have, like, a real good, like, explanation for it. That's just, that's just how we did it. Um, and yeah. we season the water. We season the crap out of it. Like they taste good from the inside out. I just I don't know what it is about. It's got to be on the outside it is too. So, it's and so like, controversial. We'll, we'll like we'll drench. You know, we'll pour and we'll pour some on the outside and close the lid of the ice chest and shake them and let them steam them in there. Steam. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's not you know it's not like we're just like dumping some Tonys on top of them and like calling it a day right. or whatever. Um, but. I don't know. I think that's just one of those things that's a personal preference, you know, and I know not yeah, everybody I, I, does I it. And like, take yep. for, you know, I, I I was very shy about my, uh my like dusting of my crawfish until Britt's cooking <laughs> posted a video and she was like, I just yes. so shut up. And I was like, yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I hit her like, in the comments too. It's like, <laughs> You're so controversial. I love it. <laughs> oh, and don't get me wrong. I'll we had Hal oh, on. I'll Hal is a duster uh-huh. too, so it's no, <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course she is. Hal's yeah. a duster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not, but I'm also not going to die on that hill. I'm not right. like if you bring me some crawfish that I did not have to cook and they're dusted, oh, yeah. then guess what? Thank I'm going to yeah. eat the hell like, out of them. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Like <laughs> I, I judged a crawfish cook off a couple of weeks ago, and I'm doing another one on Saturday, and you know, like. I guarantee you, they did not a single one of them dusted their crawfish, and I was fine with it. Like they were perfectly right. fine. Like the, to right. me, it doesn't really make that much. It doesn't make a big enough of a difference to like to to be blunt to put a, to be an ass about it. You know, right? Like, right. To be either yeah. way, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like well, it's fine. I mean, it's kind of like getting salt on a margarita, no salt. It's just that's yeah, a good like, point. yeah, exactly. That's a good point. Well, yeah. maybe that's that's the way I should phrase the question. Do, just do your do your not, because I'm not hateful on it either. I, no, I don't no, get it, no, but I'm not hateful on it. No, I didn't mean it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being... <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. No, I, I know, but it's a uh, but it is a thing. That is a very controversial thing. I oh, mean, that's is. more especially than, this year for some is. reason. That's it's more just... than a blonde roux or a dark caramel roux. I mean, oh that, yeah, that, that, that's. I mean, the, the oh yeah, the I've got a list of them. Like whether you use uh water or stock whether whether you use a uh, slappy mama or tony's whether you use a homemade roux or a jar roux whether you right. <laughs> you can keep exactly. going whether you use frozen there's a bunch of them i know bags. it'll just you oh, just yeah. want to stir the pot in louisiana make you a That's quick it. video about that and watch oh, it go because it's going to fly yep. every yep. time mm-hmm. it's what, unbelievable what, what truck stop has the best cracklings i mean that oh, kind of stuff yes you can get, yes you can get oh. it's going Oh my Anza, I recently started doing I did a couple of videos where so like every time I go down south for an event or to visit my family or what have you. So like I said, like my husband and my in laws are from up north and that's where we live at. And so whenever I go back home, I'll always I always make a pit stop somewhere in the Lafayette area. Um yep. either it's outside of Lafayette, to. in Lafayette, what have you. Um and sometimes in my hometown I'll stop there too. And we'll I'll pick up Buddha, Cracklins, pepper jelly. Look, I, pay, I mean, I spend upwards of two to three hundred dollars every time I stop. Oh yeah, like, turkey head up. cheese. Okay, all yeah, that I truck it back up here, and I'm like, oh, this is nice. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yep. I know. But now you're gonna at least have a best stop about. Uh, I don't know, an hour or two from you at some point. It's on Toledo Bend. So if you're anywhere near Toledo Bend, there'll be a best stop, kind of a hike. But it's closer than going all the way to South Louisiana. I didn't and I even or, I order from Bourgeois Meat Market still. I, yeah, I order really? From, I'll order. The, oh, yeah. The, oh, yeah. No, in the uh, Christmas time, I got to get some of that jerky. They, theirs is the best on the earth to me. <laughs> they, it is. It is, is good. It is good. It is good. Well, good idea. Brittany, yeah. we're, I don't want to keep you for too, too long. I did want to ask you um, about your experience on Next Level Chef. And then I, I know Blasey has a little thing that we'll close out yeah. with. But um Tell us a little bit about about that, about that whole experience. How did you, first of all, find out you were going to be on Next Level Chef? So um, they actually reached out to me initially for season two. Um, and at the time, I didn't feel that I was like up for it. Like I did the interview process 
um, and during one of the interviews, I was talking to one of the producers and he asked me like what my, like, like what my star dish would be. Um, and I was like, Oh, a, a dish. I was like, I can make a rice and gravy. And he was like, he was like, Oh, that's it. You can win with that. And that's when I knew they were like BS with me. I was like, you're, you're wrong like I know that I can't win with that so don't lie to me so I kind of like I was like oh you know I don't I don't feel like I'm ready for that at the time and so I kind of took a deep dive um and I realized that like there's so much more that I could learn so outside of TikTok and the privacy of like my own home I kind of expanded I started teaching myself how to do things that obviously I don't post online I do just to, just to do it um and then they reached yeah. back out for season three and uh, again, I had some like hesitation. I wasn't sure. Um, but my best friend, my daddy, my mom and my husband, everybody was like, if you don't shut up and do it, we're going to put you on that plane yourself, ourselves. Right. And yep. so I, I feel like, to I'll, yeah. Time to go. The show is so called. We, um, yep, let's roll. I did the interview. Pro- the interview process was long, y'all. I think it went from. Was it? Mm-hmm, I think it went from, I want to say from February and all the way through the summer. I mean. It was, oh, a, wow. I mean, interviews, background checks. Wow. I mean, it, it was, it was insane. Would you do um, like wow. virtual calls and stuff like, like hour long? Like what would they ask? What were they oh, I mean, asking they went, you? It was, it was sort of something like this. You know, I had several where okay. we talked about like my history, my skills, you know, stuff like that. And then we had background checks and then I had like, you know, we had to do like a test with a psychologist and, um, you know, make sure our mental wow. health was, you know, fine. And, um we had to you know submit photos of some of our best work and yada 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 and um and once that was all once they were like hey we've chosen you to go um we I was like oh wait like you're serious and so I think it was probably about a month month and a half and then the show actually filmed in Dublin Ireland so um I flew out and uh I went to Ireland that was the first time I'd actually ever been out of the country my passport to get the, the the process to get my passport for that is one hell of a story. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, I, we, you know, flew out to Ireland. And obviously, you know, if you've seen the show, it did not go the way that I expected. It didn't go the way that I hoped. Um, right. I was, I was out of my element. I was uncomfortable. That was, that was just, um, like the whole experience. I mean, I had fun. Um, but yeah. that, that, that level of intensity is something that I've never had before. I've never been put in a situation where I've had to cook competitively i mean i've done cook-offs but that like cook that competitively and with speed and the speed. time element to it. oh crazy. somebody Good, asked me know? that the other day they were like look is that is that like the magic of tv do they like take breaks and i'm like no not like chef um errington we were standing there in a group and she was like we're gonna do one of um tiktok's most viral um trends right now can me here comes a platform and go and that was it and that really wow. happened it, like that was real time what we That's saw exactly, yeah i mean wow. it just, yeah you don't have i mean the 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 time to conceptualize is just for me it wasn't wasn't what i needed you know um and i, I mean i did meet some really awesome people i made some really awesome friends um and like i said i had a great time but uh it was it was it was a lesson learned i don't think i was cut out to be in that kind of environment uh but and then you know i'm not going to lie i was i was fine with it I really was. I was fine with it. One, because initially I was going to be on episode two. And so I wasn't going to be the first person eliminated of the show. And then okay. they changed it. And I was the first person of the entire show eliminated. And I was like, uh, come on. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I was like I said, I wasn't mad about it. I was fine with it. I was like, you know, I effed up. That was my bad. I could have done better than that. Um, and then episode two aired and they got real meat. And then I was oh, mad. Oh, come on. Yeah. Oh. Then I was mad. Because oh, I was man. like, man, yeah. if y'all had, like, if I had gotten that alligator in that, Flipped in that it. I, w- I would still be there. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. You, it would have been over. cooking spam at the house. I, I yeah. Was, you want spam videos? Yeah. I had canned sh- I didn't even know shrimp came in a can. I, right. <laughs> I, did, I didn't either. I did <laughs> not were, either. I'm watching. I, I'm like, I just now y'all. found out. Oh, it had to be. That's crazy. I bet. You didn't have, I mean, it was just, yeah. I mean, it was just like, you didn't really, I felt that like you didn't really get a shot. Like she didn't yeah. get a shot to shine at all. But whatever. That's fine. How long yeah. were you there? Like with Came that filming, was that just that one day or did that? It was only a there? week. Um, okay. I was there for a week. And now people who were actually like still on the show currently, 
Um, the whole thing was blocked out, I believe, for a month. Um, but like I said, I was only there for a week of it. Um, but it was it was a great time, and we had okay. we had fun. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you made a bunch of new friends, I'm sure. Yeah, you got go on the, a trip. How was yeah. uh? How was how was Gordon Ramsay? Was he nice, or did you no. get to spend any time around him at all? No, we didn't get to spend time outside of like what you saw on the screen. However, they did a lot of editing on that show. He said some very, very, very hurtful things. Um, really? Like they edited out. Oh yeah, they edited out a lot. They uh, and it, and it. I, I think um, I, I think I cried for three hours when I got back to my room wow. that night. Holy cow! He said some really, oh, really man. mean things. And um, like at the end, somebody else asked me. They're like, "Is that like the um the, the magic of TV where they like left you in the basement standing in the dark?" I was like, no, that's not, that's not magic. They left me in the basement standing in the dark. Wow. So I was just like, holy cow. (laughs) Yeah. I've always kind of wondered the same thing. If that's just the magic of the editing and and all of that. Well, that's not our, well, that's not our kind of people. So you didn't need to be over there with (laughs) that kind of folks. That's right. Exactly. I know. I mean, I I did learn a lot. You know, it just, even the short time that I was there, they pushed me to, you know, I did a lot of like research and a lot of experimentation and I learned a lot. So I feel like I've gotten better. Um, yeah. Even even just being there for that short amount of time, because being around those kind of people, I, I learned like on the bus rides to like actually film like they were we were sitting in the bus seats and they were like, OK, if you had um, a lamb chop and tomatoes and, and an onion and, the, and what would you do? Go. And, and I was like, yeah. yeah, oh, that's a good way to practice. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, and I was just throw... standing there listening to him yeah. like. I've never even had a lamb chop on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. Oh, I would have been so nervous, Brittany. I don't know. I, you're brave just oh, to man. go and tackle it. I would have been scared. Well, Put yourself in that position. And you yeah, learned, been, and you learned, and so when you get called stuff. again, you'll be a little more prepared. You'll have a better yeah, idea what I you're trying like, to do. Yeah, Will you do like it again? Another... I have very um, mixed feelings about it. I feel like if I was called to do it again, I could be more prepared, um, but I'd I'm terrified of failure at the same time. So I'd be afraid of going over there and having like a repeat. Um, but like I said, I feel like if I was to get called to do something like that again, I, I would know what to expect. And like I said, I've learned a lot since that time because that filmed last year. Um, right. So I, I feel like like if they called me next month and offered me to do something like that again, yeah, I might do it just because the the learning opportunity was something that like I – I can't take that back, you know? Yeah. Right. There you and go, I, America. Yeah. Call her. Well, I was going to say. Do, I, let's get her on there. Give her a damn shot. Yeah. Give her some seafood. Give her some beef. Yes. Give her something. <laughs> And that, there's that and they're not with. and they're not all like uh, Gordon. Uh, obviously, I'm friends with Shepherd Robert Irvine and his wife Gail yeah. Kim, and he they are both sweethearts, good people. Oh, so yeah. if if, yeah. if Chef Irvine ever does a show, um, if I ever get a shot, I will tell you. You got to get Brittany on there because the, the she didn't get a shot. Give her some real meat and watch her shine. <laughs> I'm yeah, not gonna lie, sure. you know, like I have I have a love hate relationship with Chef Ramsay, and I said that you know they edited edited a lot of it out, and um, I'm thankful for that because one. Oh, it was bad. But two, um, wow. it you can tell that it's obviously done for the wow factor. It's done for TV. For the TV. Okay, can, that was the question. That. Is yeah. is he yeah. really that? Is he that mean of a person, or is he, is that all. his TV character? I, that's... I genuinely think it's for TV, and I genuinely think it's because he wants people to bring out the best in themselves. So it's sort of like a, it's like a. A scare learning tactic is kind of what I refer to it as. Yeah, like, like tear yeah, you down not, and then try to build yeah. you back that's up. Like that's my yeah. view of it is that he does it not just to be rude, okay. but like to make people want to do better. So, because like yeah. before we actually yeah. started like cooking and filming, he's funny. Right. Yeah, that's what and, I, and, I watch and his usually... TikToks and stuff, and he's hilarious, <laughs> and he cuts up with his daughter and all. Mm-hmm. It's like I, I wasn't expecting you to say what it's you said different. at all. I was like, oh, well, that's kind of disappointing. I yeah, like, and usually, I like Chef Ramsey. Yeah, I'm usually, not gonna like him if he isn't well, nice to Brittany though. So <laughs> right, Ramsey. but he's kind of burned a bridge with me now. Yeah, usually it's just yeah. their own personalities dialed up, you know. Yeah. So it's probably yeah. a little in I think there, he's but then you know, tough to to make a point is all it is, really. Yeah. And it's yeah. hard to get to the spot where he's at not being that way, you know? Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. I agree. He's, he's yeah. Put the it's work well earned. He, he's, he's earned the right to be that way. Yeah. Right. He has. That's that's yep. a fact. Yep. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. 
Well, look, let's get to this last little segment of our show. Brittany, I'm going to let Blasey take over here with our segment that we like to call Blasey. Little bits of controversy. <laughs> All right. You ready for this? We're going to ask you a few questions. Now, one of these things, a good thing, you kind of got to practice okay. already, a little practice round in. We talked right. about crawfish. That was one of the questions I was going to ask you. You know, do you dust crawfish or not? Yeah. So we know that now. <laughs> you do. That's fine. Do your thing there. You did mention something a while ago, though. Water or yeah. stock. I mean, how do you um, roll So there? growing up, uh, we were water people. Stock to stock is a luxury. That was water's free. Stock yeah. was like a yeah. dollar and some change. That, that's a luxury. I like it. Um, when, when I was growing up. And so now I'm a stock girly, but I actually do make it myself most of the time. Um, but yeah, I mean, it took me a little while to get to that point. I've always been just a water girl. If you season it right, you really almost can't tell the difference. But if I use stock on it, it's because I, I make it myself. Great. There you go. Yeah. There we go. That's awesome. I hadn't even That's thought of that inside, one either, you know, and you brought it up. So <laughs> you you brought your own yeah, question know, to the I game. I, that one I love it. <laughs> yes, she <you> did. <laughs> That's why I had to get the answer. Um. So let me ask you this. There's a couple of more. I'm going to regroup on this a little bit. So the, uh, like, if you had to eat one type of food for the rest of your life, what would it be? I know that's tough because variety is awesome. But... Pasta. I love pasta. Right. Pasta. I love pasta. I have to love agree it. With you. And do like, you especially make, if it's handmade. Agree with handmade. You do you make? I was going to say, do you make your make your? I would mm -hmm. figure you made your own. <laughs> yeah. oh, that is. No, I mean, if you've never had handmade pasta, you are missing out. And it's not difficult. It's it's labor intensive, but it is so worth it. So worth it. All right. Well. Oh man. Oh, yeah, like... I love some pasta myself. Um. Mm -hmm. Back to the cooking thing. So okra. And the gumbo, yeah, you're um, I know. Personally, I like it. Um, yeah. My husband does not. So as it stands right now, I yeah. don't make it with it in there um, because he wouldn't need it. And why am I going to make a pot of gumbo if <laughs> that he's not going to eat yeah. it? So um, I, do, I do like it. I don't mind it. I actually, <laughs> I really like okra. I think I've got like three jars of like pickled okra in my icebox as, you know, at the moment. I love it. Um, but I don't, I don't do it now just because it's not a family favorite. And say I'm yeah. in the I'm yeah. in the opposite. Yeah. I like okra in my gumbo. My wife does not. So when we first, uh, you know, when she first started making gumbo mm -hmm. and we were together, I would say I like okra in my gumbo. She says, "Well, you ought to make you gonna have to make your own gumbo." Then. <laughs> right. So <laughs> now I don't eat okra in my gumbo. So. <laughs> yeah. See, my yeah. husband doesn't cook, so if I don't cook, he doesn't eat for baby. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. I feel so sorry for your husband. Yeah, I just feel yeah. so yeah, bad right. for him. <laughs> That's what I said. He well, ain't I missing learn, many meals, really I do sure. not believe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's getting good ones, too. I'm jealous oh, of him, man, frankly. That's what's great. She's doing TikTok videos every day. And he gets yes, he does. Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. He's got the best job yeah. on earth. He gets, he gets the, he's the sampler. <laughs> he's my guinea pig. <laughs> that's man. right. That's what it, JR is the handler. You should bring your husband on, do a podcast, and call him the sampler. The handler the sampler. Spitball in here right now. And he works hard, oh, though, so he so can good. eat all that food because he's going to work it that's off right. anyway. He's so going to burn he, it all mm -hmm. off. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Good <laughs> Lord. That, um, oh, man. I, I would be 500 that pounds. That just uh, that's what everybody that says, and he's not. I mean, he's, he's about that big around. He, I mean, he yeah. he eats, but he works it off. I mean, he – Right. Yeah. That's good. Uh -huh. He burns. Yeah, yeah, he goes. Yeah. Lucky sucker. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Um. Okay, Brittany, I, hey, I, I know mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier that, you know, that your Our parents were your biggest influence, you know, in your cooking, kind of what helped you to develop what you, like mm -hmm. we see now on TikTok videos and on social media. But as far as, like, getting things out there and, like, mm -hmm. in the digital world and actually putting stuff out there, what type of an influence was Bubba the Love Sponge for you? What? Bubba the Love Sponge. I just wanted, you know, the influence that you mentioned, I, I read your bio, that he was a really big in influence for you with your social media as far as the digital world that you're trying to get everything out there. Just curious how that came I'm about. Confused. Who is that? Yeah. As you should be. <laughs> no, we're That's all what we wanted. Who is Bubba? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm thinking of my dad's best friend. His She's name like, is Bubba. And I was like, how did you oh. know that? 
<laughs> oh my lord it's a big powerful podcast we it's have we can fun. get in touch with it's anybody we love fun. Fun. we do our deep dives we do the research here yeah. at tig's bits uh, we get what we want the I info love no. Lord, no, no. just like i never heard him call the love sponge i'm gone i'm gone well, who, he, who he's talking about Brittany, is chad's favorite uh radio personality in florida and every time we have a guest on, he asks, "Do they, he ties it in somehow? Do they know Bubba, his guy? He likes the oh, radio <laughs> Bubba." Yeah, so it it always creates Lord, a fun I'm fun little like, clip. Like, and uh, I don't understand? I guess yeah. And, and he's a and he's a and his his show is a fan further. of our show. We're actually on his podcast network with our regular uh-huh. podcast and stuff outside the TV show. Yeah. So anyway, it's to him Chad being silly because I looked at, and I was yeah. like, "Where's he going?" And I'm thinking, "Yeah, I was too." Does she know Bubba? Going, I mean, Dud. Yeah, <laughs> You sold it on all of us, Blasey. You did. Like, what, Great job. Yeah, that's right. Bio, I twisted it that time. Just, uh, I quit something and, for, and then I was like, wait, are you talking about like Bubba Bubba? How do you know that? <laughs> do you have do you have a uh, website for everybody to go to or does everybody just need yeah. to go to your bio and instant all um, that? It's, uh, so it's in my bio and it's just, it's a it's essentially a link that opens a page that has links to everything. So if you click that link, it opens another little page that has like it has like my shipping address, my name, and it has like my Amazon, which I don't really ever update, but it has like my Amazon and it has um uh links to my cookbooks and it has links, I believe, to all my other socials and links to like Pepper the app and a couple other things I believe are in there. Um that every time like oh a link to like all of my favorite like cookware, like my um McWares, my Magnolites, my cast irons, there's links to all of those in there. Um, well, for the Magnolites, it's just a link to the history, but <laughs> right, you know, right. it's just, a, yeah, it's just a bunch of links in there that I think are like useful and informative and stuff like that. Very, very yeah. nice, very nice. Yeah, and y'all go check her at check her out. Go get yep. her cookbook, yeah, <laughs> both of them. Can't wait for another one. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's just there, there's a there's so much so much of this onion to unpeel. Hopefully, we can have you back on and I'd love uh, to. and. This is fun. Back up about some stuff. Yeah, yeah we'll do a we'll do a tra- we'll do a travel <laughs> episode, and you can tell us about your passport. Uh, uh, yeah, so yeah, we do need to. <laughs> we do, we've I'm got gonna, left um, that little nugget out. Yeah, we can dive um, into that. To, to like give you some insight, it le- it led me to running down the streets of New Orleans by myself, quite wow, literally wow. running. Running. Wow. So. Oh. I yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, there you go, folks. This We've got a tease, great. so she has to come back <laughs> on. Got to come back now. She has to, or we oh. may have one night when we go live. If you would be yeah, willing to come on, on live, live and you can be a fun bring some about. of your audience over too. It could it could get wild, or we may just shut it down. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on and visiting with us, Brittany. We can't wait to uh, can't wait to talk to you again. I'm excited. Thank you for having me. Yeah. This was fun.